would you agree that one of the biggest issues stock and options face is risk? In this video, I'm going to share five techniques you can use to eliminate or greatly reduce the amount of risk you have when you trade stocks and options. As I always do on this channel, I'm going to show these five techniques with you using my real life trades and positions. Here you see the daily chart of the Kroger company, ticker symbol KR. It's a grocery store company. Here in the bottom, you see two yellow arrows. Those are two days where I bought some shares of KR. I believe at that time the stock was undervalued, so I wanted to own some shares. So I bought some shares in my outright stock ownership account. After I bought these shares, over the next several months, KR did have a nice advance of around 7%. But then starting in February, it absolutely took off. Over the next month and a half, it increased in price by over 24%. The market realized what I had realized, that the stock was apparently undervalued. At that point, I looked at fair value and I determined it was around $60 per share. So I set a limit order to sell the stock if it reached that price. Well, that order never got filled. As you see here over the past month and a half, KR appears to have topped out at least temporarily and it has declined over 5%. So going back to the title of this video, how do you reduce risk? At what point did I want to eliminate my risk here? Because there's a very real possibility that KR may come down to test this red 200 moving average on this daily chart and also to fill the gap it made back in early March. I don't want to give up 7% of gains, even if that means the stock would be undervalued at that point. At that point, I could just buy more shares. So at what point do I eliminate my risk here? Well, for me, I'm going to look at this green 50 moving average. Several days ago when KR broke below that green 50 moving average, I realized it was probably time to exit this position. So that's exactly what I did yesterday. I sold the shares I had in KR. And what was the result? Well, as you see in the top right, we were able to lock in a nice profit of right around 20% in a grocery store company in a time frame of less than six months. Now I look for KR to come back down to buy new shares in it if I believe it's then potentially undervalued. So the first way to manage risk if you're a stock and ops trader is just to have a price in mind that if the stock reaches that level, you're going to exit the position. He said that once I had this nice advance and locked in in KR, I decided that if it broke below this green 50 moving average, I was going to exit the position and take my profit. Now what should your exit price be? Well, it could be a moving average. In this case, it was not only a moving average, but it was also the low of this candle going back to May 3rd. See, the low of that candle was $54.23 per share. So this area not only coincided with the green 50 moving average, but when it broke below this low, as represented by this light yellow line here, I decided it was time to get out. And that's exactly what I did. Now, when do you do this? Well, you do it before you enter a trade. I felt comfortable owning these shares even if KR declined below the price that I paid for them. But once I had a nice advance, I then began to look for when was the right time to exit this position. Once it reached around that fair value of what I thought the company should be trading for, my exit position was if it broke below this green 50 moving average or below the low of this candle from May 3rd. That's exactly what I did. And it's important to set these price limits up front or well before you need to make the decision. Because at the point it reaches that spot, it shouldn't be a decision. It should be automatic. So set your exit plans well before you ever need to implement them or preferably before you even enter the trade. And that applies to stock and option trading. Have a plan in place in case things go against you, but also plan in place for when they go for you. So having a profit target or a loss target in place before you enter a trade is a nice way to minimize risk. Here's the second way I like to minimize risk. Here you see a trade I closed out in SJM just the other day. We bought to close the May 17th $115 cash care put options for a dollar per share. Here's my spreadsheet with all my trades in SJM over the past several years. The yellow area is the trade I just closed out that I just shared the alert with you. Notice our net profit, but I really didn't make much money. We lost $2 on this one contract, $5 on this one, and we gained $19 on the third contract. So overall, we walked with a profit of just over $10 total for these three put option contracts that we sold that expired the third Friday of May. So why don't I just roll these contracts out? I potentially could extend them and walk with a nice gain if I rolled them out to June or July. The reason why I didn't do that is because as you see here in the highlighted blue section, SGM is about to announce earnings next month. So I wanted to eliminate the risk of being in a cash care put option position in SGM through earnings. And because of that, I closed it out. And thankfully I was able to do it for a very small gain. Now a big gain would've been better, but I couldn't get that big gain. So I was happy to walk away with a small gain, but it totally eliminates the risk that I would face in trading options in SAM through earnings. Unless you're a long-term stock option or in a stock, I encourage traders to exit positions if at all possible when a company is supposed to announce earnings during that next option expiration cycle. There's just too much risk when it comes to earnings. Anything can happen. So because of that, I try to exit my positions if at all possible when earnings are approaching. So the second tip allows you to actually eliminate risk and that's to avoid trading in stocks and options through earnings unless you're a long-term owner of that stock. The next way you can minimize risk if you're trading in options is to sell farther out of the money put options. Here you see a trade we did about three weeks ago when we sold the ARE 
June 21st, $105 cash care put options. We got nice premium for selling that put option of $1.15 per share. Why am I sharing this trade with you as a potential way to eliminate or minimize risk? Well, here you see the daily chart of ARE. On April 30th, with ARE trading for around $116 per share, remember we sold the $105 cash secure put option. That option was way down here where you see the white line is. So it was over $10 out of the money. That meant before our $105 cash secure put option strike price was challenged, ARE would need to decline over $10 per share. With it having been consolidating and finding support around $105, $15 per share, I felt very comfortable selling that $105 cash care put option. Well, the stock did exactly what we thought it might do, which is take off. And over the next several weeks, at a nice advance of over $10 per share. Because of that nice advance, as you see here on May 17th, we were able to close this position out early for a really nice profit. So we bought to close that same June 21st $105 cash care put option for only 20 cents per share. Remember, it expires on June 21st. So we close this position out over a month early. So not only do we sell the cash care put option well out of reach of danger, or over 10% out of the money, but we're also able to close it out early, thus pocketing a really nice annualized return on a very safe position. So the technique here is if you're selling put options, to consider selling those options out of the money. That will greatly decrease the amount of risk you have if the underlying stock were to experience a decline. You might be asking, well, how good exactly was that return? Here's in the far right column, I've calculated that annualized return. It was right at a 19% annualized return, non-leveraged. So that's based on the $105 cash care put option strike price that we sold. Remember, the option was over $10 out of the money. So a nice, safe trade, a nice way to minimize or greatly reduce the risk you have when you're selling put options. That's one way you can reduce risk if you're selling put options. But what about if you're buying stock? If you're looking to buy a stock for the long term, Here's another idea you could use to minimize risk or to reduce the amount of risk you have in stock ownership. These yellow arrows are two days when we bought shares of KR. It's a grocery store company, the Kroger company. At this point, I believe that KR was very undervalued. And so I bought shares in it. Now I bought them at a market price. I paid exactly where they were at on this candle on those days. But with my belief that the market had undervalued the stock, I felt like I was greatly decreasing the amount I had at risk in these shares. And the market came around because as you see here, over the next several months, it had a nice advance over 27%. And this is a mature, stable grocery store company. But with me buying it at a discount to what is fair value typically trades at, it lined me up to minimize what I had at risk in a great company like Kroger. Buying stocks when they're undervalued gives the opportunity to buy mature and stable companies, but also have those potential big wins. A fourth way that you could potentially eliminate or greatly reduce risk if you're trading options is to consider using risk reversals. Here's an example of a risk reversal trade we did almost four months ago in Hershey, ticker symbol HSY. Now, a risk reversal is simply selling a put option and then buying a call option with that premium. Here in blue, you see the income portion of this risk reversal. We sold to open the HSY January of the next year, so the option expires in about 12 months from when we did the trade, 150 put option. And I'll show you the chart in just a minute of where it was trading at when we did this trade. We then used most of that cash to buy the HSY January 17th of the same expiration day 250 call option in spite of buying that call option we still walked away with 32 cents per share or 32 dollars minus commission for this trade here you see the weekly chart of hershey and the yellow areas are when we did trades the first going back here to january 30th this is when we enter that risk reversal position. Notice that Hershey was trading for around $190 per share. How safe was this trade? With Hershey trading for around $190 per share, that 150 put option was $40 out of the money. That meant that it was almost 20% out of the money. And notice of the previous several months, it had been finding nice support with a low of around $179 per share. Overall, I thought this was a very safe trade and a very stable and mature company that generates consistent cash flow. So doing a risk reversal helped us to greatly reduce or minimize what we had at risk. But I also totally eliminated this risk altogether, as you see here in this yellow arrow on May 5th. So how did I do that? Here you see the risk elimination trade I did a couple days ago. Remember, we had sold the HSY January 17th 150 put option. Well, May 15th, we bought to close that 150 option and we paid for it by selling that same expiration day, January 17th of next year, the 270 call option. And here you see the note I shared with my patrons. By doing this trade, we've taken all of our risk off the table with that cash secure put option. We walked with an additional 15 cents per share. But here's the kicker. Here's the sweet part of doing a risk reversal when you've taken all your risk off the table. Here you see I remind my patrons that we still have the potential to make at most $20 per share if Hershey was above or at that 270 call option strike price that we sold that day. And the reason that we still own that 250 call option that we bought when we entered this risk reversal position back in January. 
So what have we done here? We've eliminated this risk with the 150 put option. We own the 250 call option and we've sold the 270 call option. So if Hershey is back at its previous highs from back here in the summer of last year, around 270 per share, and we stay in this position, we could actually walk with $20 per share profit for that call option spread. Using risk reversals is a nice, safe way to greatly decrease the amount you have at risk in underlying stock, especially when you sell those put options pretty far out of the money. And if the stock goes your way, you can totally eliminate that put option risk by buying to close it out. You can typically fund it by selling a call option above the strike price of the call option that you own. That lets you eliminate your risk altogether with that put option, but also lining you up to potentially win with your call option spread. So the tip here is to consider using some option strategies like doing risk reversals and stocks that are already beaten down in price. When you pick the strike price of the put option you're selling, consider selling them well out of the money or far from danger. That gives you room for the position to go against you and you still potentially win in the long term. The fifth way to minimize how much you have at risk for trading options is best demonstrated in a trade I just closed out a few days ago. I'm going to take you back about a month and a half ago to give you the background on this position. Here you see on April 2nd, I sold a bullish put credit spread. We sold the May 17th 29 put option and bought for protection that same expiration day, May 17th, but we bought the $25 put option. So if you do the math here, we have $29 minus $25 at risk, so $4 per share. In spite of that, we're still able to walk away with a nice cash in our pocket up front by doing this bullish put credit spread of 50 cents per share. Well, well, what happened to this trade? Here you see the daily chart of HPQ. Notice that when we did this trade, it recently made a nice higher high and it also made a nice higher low. It had broken through the green 50 and red 200 moving average on this daily chart, came down, found support at those moving averages and was bouncing off of it. Well, it experienced a nice down day. So that's the day we entered this trade. We sold the $29 put options and bought for ourselves some protection by buying that $25 put option. Well, as you see here, things didn't go according to plan. It did find support there for a few days, but then it pushed through it. Over the next several weeks, it had a big decline all the way down to $27.5 per share. At that point, our $29 strike price was in the money. We didn't feel too uncomfortable because remember, we bought that $25 put option for protection. So we had some insurance in case HPQ continued to decline. And that's always a possibility. Now in this case, it didn't turn out that way. As you see here, HPQ did indeed go up in price. And so the trade worked out for us. In fact, here you see the trade where we closed this position out for nice profit. We got 50 cents per share up front when we entered this trade. We bought those put options back for 10 cents per share. So overall, even though the position went against us initially, we're able to walk with a nice profit. So tip number five is, if you're going to sell cash to put options, why not consider buying yourself some protection? Notice this protection period only costs us eight cents per share. And we're still able to walk with a nice cash in our pocket of 50 cents per share overall. So if you're selling put options, consider greatly decreasing what you have at risk by buying yourself a protected put option, or instead of doing cash secured or naked put options, consider doing bullish put credit spreads. Knowing how to properly manage risk is very important if you want to be a successful long-term stock or option trader. If you'd like to get an alert whenever we buy stock or sell options, consider the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. Knowing how to reduce or actually eliminate risk is just one piece of knowledge you need to have to become a long-term successful stock and option trader. If you'd like to see more of my favorite tips and tricks that will help you become a more successful stock and option trader, check out the video series at the link above in the description below entitled Trade Options Like a Pro. Until next time, Happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.